Yo, what up guys? So, uh, if you were with me yesterday, um, you guys would know that in the live video I was doing, I had a little bit of a crash that knocked out the electronics in my board. Um, I'll link that video up above here if you guys haven't seen it yet. And, um, yeah, it wouldn't arm or anything, and what it did, it just, like, it knocked out the Nano RX on, uh, my quad, and, um, pretty much like the OSD. So something with the components on the board. I'll try and reflow the board. Um, I've been told that works. I get just some stuff lifts off the pads, I guess. We'll see. In the meantime, I had another board, which having all the wires and everything already pre-cut, made it super quick to just solder on this board. I mean, literally maybe like 10 minute job to take them off, put this one back on. Um, I pretty much did that already. Uh, you guys, I'm sure all of you guys know how to like solder up a board and everything. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to show you guys a couple little finishing things that I have done on here and maybe give you guys just a little overview of how I set everything up on uh, like my quad, like basically my, my internal guts of the quad. So let me finish soldering up uh, a couple more things on here and then, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start explaining myself. Alright, so last bit of soldering is done. That was just soldering the micro um, RX onto here uh, for the crossfire. And one thing I added that I didn't have on this quad before, which I should have, uh, if you guys looked at my last, last ethics video, this was uh, pretty much like a fresh flash on the last board and build and everything. And I had a little twitch in the flight. And usually that what that is because I'm not running a cap. Um, didn't have a cap on that board, so what I ended up doing was making sure I soldered in a cap. I just soldered this directly to the power leads over here. Um, stops any weird like twitches from like over throttling, I guess, these ESCs, or just cleaning up the noise basically of the power going into um, here, especially since I'm using like an all in one. Um, I'm big on trying to just clean up as much noise as possible. If you see pretty much every Every wire I have um, that I can, I pretty much just like twist up. So you can see here's twisted wires up front here. Um, and if you twist your wires basically together, you're cutting down on a lot of noise that's getting into your system as well. So it definitely helps to make sure that your wires are nice and twisted. Having these nice soft silicone wires are pretty good. If you actually heat them up with a, um, like a, I, I'd say, if you use a blow dryer, it might be a little bit better to soften them up, twist them up, and they kind of stay that way. Use a heat gun, just be very careful because you can melt this uh, silicone like covering of the wire very easily. So you just have to be very careful when using a uh, heat gun. So um, what else? Uh, what else, guys? Um, still using these Wrath ESCs. These have been pretty solid. Nothing's been uh, exploded on them. I've only exploded one which was like kind of weird, um, but uh, other than that, they've been super solid. I run just the telemetry on them. I run the uh, the ESC telemetry for my battery. Um, I know it's probably not like, some people say it's not the most accurate, but it does pretty much what it should for me. Um, it's not bad. I'm still using a older Foxier Aero CCD cam. I do use the Predator also, which is a CMOS on my other quad and it's just I've been kind of just still in an experimental phase of running the two cameras I I'm not a hundred percent sold on CMOS I do like the image quality but when I do certain like maneuvers I could totally tell there's like it's not a wait and see it's like more of like a like a motion blur I, I don't really know how to explain it but um, I don't get that with the old CCD cam, so I still run like a CCD cam when I, I want to go hard. So, uh, yeah, besides the cap, that camera, we already know I'm running the Helio. That took a, a dump yesterday. Got my motors on here. Nano RX in the back. I run this external mic. I found this mic to be pretty good. I don't know if you could see it back there. It's like this flat one here it actually there's a screw right here I could adjust the gain on the on the mic which is nice um, 
I like being able to like fine tune it so it sounds like just right amount of motor noise in my my ear um, and that way I'm able to like just fine tune it to exactly like how much gain I want coming out of it it's just it's n nicer for me I'd r rather go this route I guess than uh, some of the internal mics that are in the cameras and stuff so I have that I actually cut off like a little piece of foam if you could see here I think this was like from a motor so dark like I mean actually I could probably boost this up for you if you could see in here let me see there's a little piece of foam right there you could see it and that was just like some foam that I uh, uh, I I cut it out and then I took my soldering iron and I basically made like an indention hole and put it over the mic um, the, the actual microphone so it cuts back on the wind noise and that helped like quite a bit um, next step that I have to do on this is I run this antenna on the, uh, the TBS micro receiver. I, I ran it on all the TBS ones and I've been doing this for a long time. I have another video on how I set up my antenna. I will uh, link that one up here too. And I basically just bring it down into here, do the L shape pattern off the back. Um, and I do that with just running a zip tie, some shrink tubing, and I slip it over the actual standoff here and it holds it into the corner. So I'm gonna do that now, next, and um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get back to the next thing when, when that's all set up. Oh, and I, I gotta zip tie this guy. I don't, I don't let it just do a little dangly dangly right here. It, it actually, if you see, I, I, I have an extra notch hole here on my frame. That's to add any cap accessories like this, or if you're running a bigger receiver, you could use the outside notch holes. So, yeah, I, uh, I use that for an extra little accessory mount. I don't know why when I like do my builds, I'm like always super anal where that little nub of the zip tie is, and it just like takes extra time out of my my build. Building. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see this, but right here this shrink tubing that I've like really had to push on really hard I uh, I try and find like I, I don't even know what size this is I found out my local like uh, electronic store I try and find the tightest shrink tubing I could find that barely even fits this because I hate when this moves after I shrink tube it down and I've had that before so if it's hard for me to put this on now once I add a little heat to it, it's not going to move anywhere. And then you can see here, let me move this. Here's the other little line. After I shrink tube this on, I am going to just take a zip tie around this main part and extend that straight out and then shrink tube this under there for protection. And that's pretty much it. So this guy, which will be about right here, is not touching, like, there's no way that it could get cut off of the little connection that it has here because it's all protected and I give myself a little bit of a gap space with this tight shrink tubing. So let's zap it on there for, for good right now. Alright, next thing here is we're going to zip tie this guy on. Now, like I said, I am a stickler for these little nubs. I like having my nub on on this side of it. I don't know why, but I just do. I like having it towards the inside. And this will tighten up the bottom here. And then what I do is I run this guy. All right, so that's nice and clear right there. I run this guy along here. I will get another piece of shrink tubing. This one, um, I'll pre-cut this one. So what I like to do, since this one's like closest to the bottom, you can see this has this like a little bit of extra right here. I 
take off a little bit of the tail. I don't want it as long. But when I do the shrink tubing, I leave a little bit of tail and I close off the top. And just like kind of seal it in there. Won't need that guy anymore. So when I get here, I just pinch it. It's nice and hot. Pinch the end of it. Trim it. And that's pretty much it. This little pigtail guy like hangs off the side over here. Um, always towards the very end, we can plug everything in, see if I hooked everything up. Haven't done that yet. Let me trim this little guy a little bit more. It's bugging me. All right. Um, hopefully I hooked that that cap up the right way so it just uh, it doesn't explode right now. Let's see. No big boom and we're, we're good to go again. Okay. Everything's all good. So now I just need to uh, reflash the firmware on there. Um, put in like my values of things I guess that I have. Uh, still need to tune it so I never got to doing any PID stuff or anything um, but yeah that's about it uh, don't need to worry about overheating the, uh, the transmitter right now because it's not hooked up if you guys are wondering how I do the transmitter it's basically like this I just uh, run the the two zip ties through these holes here that I made uh, on the top plate I put a little bit of like padding right here so it's not a making any contact with a carbon or anything and yeah I just have this this little shrink wrap guy just kind of floating floating up top against here um, actually when it heats up and it's against like the carbon of this top plate it seems like it actually like will will help with uh, dissipating some heat and everything too um, it's just in my experience it seems that way that it doesn't get as hot but uh yeah I use this guy. This is the uh, HB version of the Unify, and I just plug that in wherever wherever the plug's at. There it is. We'll get this top plate all put back on and uh, go test it again. All right, so uh, I forgot I have to update my Nano RX, and remember last time it didn't work with like the auto update, but check that out. It's uh, totally blinking, ready to go. So. Um, auto update works. Awesome. Love TBS. Updating those firmwares. All right, let's uh let's test this guy out. Before I gotta head home for the day. So, um, yeah, looks like everything works. Was hovering pretty good. Obviously, I need to increase. Shush, lady. Obviously, I need to increase like the uh, the eyes and stuff. It's windy right now, and it was hovering and it was kind of moving, doing some 
some things. I don't know, gotta pit tune it anyways. But uh, yeah, stoked, back in business. So, got two quads again, and tomorrow, tomorrow we uh, go rip somewhere. It'll be fun. I haven't really like gone somewhere to fly in a minute, and I wanna burn through a lot of packs. So, I will uh, see you dudes tomorrow. Peace. Thank you.